CK3's next chapter of DLC has just been announced. A lot of new content to go through and unpack. With this video, we're going to look at what is coming out with the three new expansions that chapter three will have, my thoughts on each one, and finally, if any of my 2024 wish list has come true. With this grand announcement, we have found out that like chapter one and two, we're getting three DLCs in 2024. Legends of the Dead, Roads to Power, and wandering nobles. Legends of the Dead. Turn yourself into a figure of legend in this core expansion where great feats and effective propaganda can enhance the power of your bloodline through centuries. Direct the course of your dynasty's legend through court chronicles, whether building reputation from great buildings or legendary feasts, but beware of the growing threat from distant lands as the Black Plague builds a legendary legacy of its own. With Legends of the Dead, we'll be getting two major game additions legends and plagues both are able to spread throughout the lands and can either help or hinder you the legend seems to be a new way to get your family or more specifically one member to be known far and wide will give you access to a number of legendary buildings such as shrines statues palace watchtower and hunting lodge who knows if these buildings can be built anywhere or if it is going to be like the duchy capital only slots my guess is it might be like the tower of glass event which means it can be added to any county capital. This element also unlocks a new feast type and a court position that will help in spreading your chosen legends to your neighboring states. As for plagues, we will finally be getting the addition of the Black Plague, which devs said will be a late game mechanic spawning around 1300 or earlier depending on your rules you select. Outside of that, plagues will come in many forms than just the Black Plague. For example, Bloody Flux, measles and more depending on which region you're playing in looks like your court physician role is going to get more options kind of like your counselors they'll be put to the test against all these incoming viral and bacterial threats to your rule with so much death happening at your court the devs have hinted that they will be adding a new event funerals which might be determined by the player's faith maybe we will get that added to the faith or maybe it will be just from those couple of tenants like Sky Burial. Finally, there is a new mechanic that will affect every ruler, which is legitimacy, which will be a sliding scale that represents the ruler's right to reign. What does that mean? The lower the legitimacy you have, the harder it will be when it comes to dealing with claimant factions, getting alliances, and vassalizing. Whereas with a higher legitimacy, you can get the opposite, more renown, better opinions of your rulers, and easier time with factions and vassalization. My first reaction to this expansion is that it will be a fun one. Adding more content throughout the game is always a plus, and getting some more late game mechanics is much needed. I feel like the plague system will be fun at first but might become tedious depending on how they implement it. I like the idea of having Legends Dairy character whose story gets perpetuated through the years. Imagine you have a ruler whose legend is that you throw one hell of a party that continues to be talked about centuries afterwards. Roads to Power The majesty of the Byzantine Empire has taken center stage in the, this major expansion. Rule from the Constantinople through a new administrative government form, experience a variety of new Byzantine theme events and flavor, or be truly daring and leave a life where nobles and reputation is not tied to the land, roaming the map as an adventurer for hire. The second DLC, Road to Power, was talked about to a much less degree, but will entail more Byzantine-focused content, which I know many of y'all have been pleading for since launch. It also adds a pretty wild mechanic of being able to play as an unlanded character. For me, that's going to be the more interesting part of this DLC, because are you just going to roleplay around the map and just keep having a landless playthrough? Going court to court, tournament to tournament, just becoming the best castle guest the world has ever seen? We will finally be getting another government type, administrative government. It seems to be a system where viceroys or governors run your lands and you manage what they're getting up to. Feels like a weird mechanic, like are these governors selected from your vassals to rule over regions that you set up, or just through the de jure or duchies and kingdoms. Either way, I'm interested in learning more about this as more details come out. As for my thoughts on this DLC, I could care less about the Byzantine experience, which I know is, isn't true for most of the community, but I'm excited to bop around the map as an adventurer and cause problems and spread my family legend by being the most interesting person in the world. Wandering Nobles. 
Building on the travel system introduced with tours and tournaments, this event pack introduces a new travel lifestyle and a new way and reason to travel. Incidents and stories related to the roaming far from the safety of your court. The third and maybe the smallest of the DLCs for Chapter 3, Wandering Nobles will build on the wandering mechanic introduced in Roads to Power. It will be adding a new lifestyle wanderer, which will allow you to pick one or all three paths, surveyor, wayfarer, voyager. It also will be adding more mini activities for each of these three channels. Plus more travel events, which will be needed because I can see how repetitive it can get all in all, I'm going to say that this shouldn't be a standalone DLC. Really should just launch with Roads to Power. Really what they should do is wait to add the adventures with this DLC instead of Roads so that it seems more impactful. But Paradox has a much better scope of the whole project than I. 2024 wishlist. Now let's take a quick look at my 2024 wishlist that I made at the start of the year. Doesn't look like we'll be getting any changes to the Crusades this year, which is unfortunate. They probably could still add in individual culture tradition images with one of these patches that is rolled out. The talk of faith changes outside of maybe something to do with funerals, which makes me think shifting or adding holy sites isn't in the cards. Trade system is doubtful, especially with all the focus on plague and this new government type. Number five on our list was more playable governments, which seems to be happening with administrative gov, but sadly no nomads or republics. 3D rendered animals are definitely still on the table. It showed a lot of content around plague rats. So I'm hoping we get our pets in on the hunt to keep our castles rat free. No immortality for the foreseeable future. Alliances will be changed a little bit with the legitimacy and possibly with the administrative gov. Finally, I'm holding out for another start date. Just because it hasn't been specifically mentioned doesn't mean we won't be getting it at a later point. Out of the nine items I was hoping for, we have one confirmed and three maybes. Which sucks for yours truly, but more content for CK3 is always welcome. My final thoughts on the chapter three announcement is that I'm optimistic with the new ideas that will be coming to CK3 in 2024. The Plague and Legends feels like a fun new addition and we will be getting it in three short weeks. Excited for unlanded characters being more of an avenue for play, but like I said before, just make Wandering Nobles the first time we get adventurers. Finally, do I think this bundle is worth 43.97 usd my honest opinion today february 7th the year of our lord 2024 if you're interested in the first two dlcs at all you should pull the trigger on chapter three however if only one of these piques your interest i would only buy that dlc especially at this point we know some of each these dlcs will have free elements added in at launch that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you really enjoyed this video, email Paradox on my behalf so that I can get this shit for free. Okay, thanks, ciao.